I have a fun sugar snap pea update for you. This is with no transplant direct winter sowing, also known as the mini version. Oh, a bug's crawling on me. Hold on. Mini direct winter sowing. Now, you've heard, I know these names are getting ridiculous, but winter sowing is this, milk jug sowing. Little mini greenhouses out of free recycled milk jugs. Okay, well, we got this idea to take it to the next level and not to have to transplant at all. We're putting the seeds directly in the soil and putting little covers. It's like cloches back in the old, old days when people used to put glass domes or plastic domes over their plants. That's sort of what this is like. But the beauty is you don't have to transplant it. Like I have sugar snap peas that are having to be transplanted and they're, they're gorgeous. They're like eight inches tall. They were grown out in the snow and those are going to be transplanted probably within the next two weeks. We haven't had our last frost date or our last freeze date yet. So anyway, um, what I, did I tell you? April 17th, 2016, and these have been in about two weeks. And the ground had just broken from being frozen. So you could say, why don't you just direct seed them? This is a lot of people say this to me, that they think they're gardeners for years, and they say, sugar snap peas should never be done in winter sowing. They should never be put in, blah, blah, blah. They, they grow so fast, just put them in the soil directly. That's true. However, it's not totally true. I want to get mine way faster than people that are direct seeding or direct sowing right into the soil. First off, I couldn't even put these in the soil for another couple weeks because we're still going to have freezes. And if these are out, even sugar snap peas, and they have no covers with either the milk jugs or these little glasses, they will freeze to death and die. We still might get another snow or two. I've got to wait. Technically, my last frost and freeze date is between uh, April 21st and May 10th. So I've got like over uh, almost another month to wait. So I'm going to have gorgeous snap peas by the time my last frost date comes. So anyway, I put these seeds in. I put about five. Uh, I used to only put two under a cup, but I'm getting bold. I put five seeds under each cup. And the idea, this is my fenced garden. Those are four foot tall. And it's worked great the last, the last year. I just wind the vines of the sugar snap peas up. And that's why I put so many more this year. I just want to make it a wall of sugar snap peas. So I'm going to let you have a peek. Now, some people say, well, those are going to blow away. Well, no, they don't. I've not had one blow away in three years of using this strategy. I also use this to protect my sugar snap pea seeds from critters in the dead of summer because they like to eat those soft, moist peas when you put them in. Um, so I have another video I'll put down below. I can't remember. I've changed the name of it twice. Something about um, sugar snap peas being eaten by critters. This method has had 100% success. So let's take a peek under one. So anyway, they're deeply pushed, not, not totally, because I just watered, but pushed down in the soil. Look how nice those look. And if it freezes tonight, I have no problem with that. They are absolutely gorgeous and healthy. Let me kind of push it down in. All you do is when the soil's super wet, sink them. Okay, look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. And see, it's because it's so cold, you don't usually see that in the, in the summer, is that seed actually came up from the ground actually having frozen since I put this in. But be darned if they didn't make it. Push it in right there. Let's look at one more just for fun. I haven't come down and look at these yet. I mean, literally, these have not had the cup removed one time in the couple weeks that I've had them in here. And they just get more and more buried in the mud. Actually, I'm not even gonna take that off. You can see those just fine. Now, are those happy sugar snap peas or what? All five of them. Sorry I'm shaking, it's cold. We've had up to 70 degrees, but now of course it's cold again, Ohio. Every one of them. I mean, they're just, there's not one dead, dying, burned, freezer burned seed. Um, very happy. So I just did a video on how I water my winter sowing container, so watch for that. I show you three different ways you can water and four tips on how to know whether you need to water. So anyway, I just watered them all and I use this uh, wand sprayer that I got at Walmart for like 10 bucks and I spray heavily a good shower and they don't even tip over or fall over and the water I have two holes drilled in the top of each one so the water goes down the top and then I just soak all around and the water is absorbed underneath so anyway mini no transplant direct winter sowing no transplant I love it I'm going to be doing a lot more of this in addition to my classic winter sowing I will always do classic winter sowing in milk jugs, juice jugs and water jugs. I'm one of those people who like tall jugs. I don't like the little short lettuce containers and yogurt things and all these pe things people are using because your plant can't get big enough. So I'm into the tall containers, pop bottles, that kind of thing. I have people saving them for me everywhere because I don't use them. 
But anyway, that's my sugar snap pea update. There they are down there. And I'm going to have this entire thing. I think it was, I can't, I can't remember my measurements. Maybe 12 feet wide by about, I think it was 18 feet long. Almost the entire thing will either be watermelons, cantaloupes, or sugar snap peas. Every inch of this fence is going to be used for vining. So, let me know what you think of my sugar snap pea method. And if you're winter sowing yours, are you going to do the mini deck direct, the regular direct, and the big containers? Or regular classic winter sewing. I know the names are ridiculous, but hey, we got to call them something. The bottom line is, is there are a lot of ways to use containers, safe food grade containers, to grow food when everybody else is just starting to think about going out to the garage and getting their packs of seeds and getting their soil together. We already have full-blown seedlings that are going to be ready to eat just as soon as the last frost date. All right, make sure you go down the bottom and let me know any tips you have on growing sugar snap peas, what you think of the method. And that's it for me today. I'll see you on the next video. Sending you much love from my garden to yours. Bye-bye.